Personal protective equipment used in all industries is typically the last line of defense when we have to protect a worker from the hazards that they face on the job. Ultimately, what we'd like to do is identify the hazards and then engineer them out. However, there are certain cases where we just can't engineer out the hazard. As an example, a flying particle that we just can't seem to stop. Then what we do is complete hazard assessment on the job to determine what the hazards are and then how we're going to address them with the proper personal protective equipment. So as an example, going back to that flying particle, we may look at it and decide that a pair of safety glasses is sufficient or it may be to the point where it's a larger object and we have to go to a pair of safety glasses and a face shield. So whatever the hazard, we can usually find a way to help protect the worker either through engineering controls where we design out the hazard or through administrative controls where we actually control it through personal protective equipment. The standards for personal protective equipment typically are prescribed by the employer for the employees and they're always common across all employees based on the exposure. As an example, if an employee is injured and uh, the employer did not protect them through the use of personal protective equipment as a serious enough accident, OSHA may come and investigate that incident and determine that there was a problem and the employer failed to prescribe that equipment and a citation would be issued. What happens a lot of times is the employer waits till something happens. A person is injured by a flying object or a cut or something like that, something hitting them in the head, and then they decide they're going to put these programs into place. The way I look at it is it should be done the exact opposite way, and that would be identifying the hazard and coming up with the corrective action before the incident occurs. Hey everybody, thanks for taking the first steps in educating yourself about safety and risk. For more in-depth information, including a free safety gap assessment, please visit hni.com or safetyoncall.com.